Hi, I'm Clyde Salumo Shirati, and I'm very pleased to know that over recent months, AMA has continued to grow its audience numbers in very, very significant way. We have now approximately eight to 10,000 video viewers and website visitors. And this is really encouraging because it means that what we are offering is indeed having an impact in the society. And this really touches us because we know how important it is for our communities, not only to see themselves reflected on some sort of media platform, but also to be able to canvas the most important of the needs and issues that they uh, are challenged by in their settlement and integration journey here in Australia. This is why we'll continue to uh, do the work that we've given ourselves here at AMA. Remember, we are not just a media platform, we are also an advocacy group. This means we promote uh, a particular viewpoint and we do that in a very transparent and open way using the concept of uh, advocacy journalism to promote a specific agenda that relates to the welfare and prosperity of the African Australian communities. In line with this, we will now be starting a series of interviews relating to community development matters. We'll start with uh, uh, a number of interviews with uh, Dr. Charles Mpande, who is a lecturer at uh, Victoria University. He is going to be talking to us about some of the most important things relating to community development. We believe that it is important for us to share the knowledge the experience, the skills that we have within our community to ensure that uh, we can fast track our settlement and integration process in this country. Without uh, uh, further delay, I will now let uh, Dr. Charles Mpande to uh, have a bit of a chat with you regarding uh, matters relating to international development and community development, and I will see you on the other side of the video. I am Charles Mpande, a lecturer at Victoria University. I lecture in international development. I think when we talk of community development, first thing I should clarify is community development has as its main thrust strengthening of communities, social, economic, and other strengthening. At the moment, the um, African-Australian communities um, are lagging behind in many respects. Uh, to begin with, let me point to uh, the UN General Assembly's uh, noting that in the world generally, um, the African people of African descent are probably uh, some of the most disadvantaged at the moment. And if we accept that, you'll find that even today in Australia, some of the most disadvantaged groups are from the African Australian uh, communities. Most of them um, um, came uh, without skills that would be relevant to an Australian context. And so skilling these people is an important thing. Uh, some of them uh, came to Australia with skills from different regions, which are not necessarily uh, recognized in Australia. Those two need reskilling. There has to be some way of um, uh, bringing these people to a, a place where their skills are recognized or improved on. If not, there has to be a way of retraining them to do something else. Uh, thirdly, um, uh, some of the people that came here, especially uh, by the uh, humanitarian process, uh, visa process, uh, include children. And these children, in some cases, did not have parents or somebody elderly to take care of them. Now that given, we have therefore a population of children that lack guidance and direction. We have a lot of hope in children or younger people. And if we can focus on uh, setting these on a course, uh, which will lead them to become professionals, they will contribute a lot, not only to the African communities, but also to Australia in general. Um, uh, thirdly, I guess the other thing that the African communities now look at is not just 
uh, immediate settlement issues. It's how they can participate and contribute to Australia as citizens of Australia. I believe there should be now a transition from being foreigners to becoming citizens who are acknowledged in their own right and can contribute that way. I guess um, I would say most of the African Australian communities are trying hard. It would be unfair of me to say that they are doing little. They are doing a lot. And I think they've come a long way to where they are at the moment. But I need to say and point out that um, probably one thing that is uh, going to strengthen their position is working together. I guess one of the things that we need to work on is uh, these different communities getting to know that uh, working together will profit them more than working individually or in small groupings. So we need to work, in my view, we need to work on how these communities would understand that their different efforts uh, would not be equal to the combined effort. Um, the other thing is that uh, we should also acknowledge the fact that in in these communities or community groups. Um, leadership is important and most of the leadership that has been in the position of leadership at the moment um, have been people that uh, were leaders sometimes because they came early or sometimes because they are the, the most elderly amongst them and so on. Now that does not discount that uh, they have done a lot of good work but surely um, the communities would benefit from leadership that is enlightened, uh, leadership that has the skills, the knowledge, the competence that the Australian context uh, would require. And the communities should be working towards who would lead them better. And uh, we should also be looking at leadership among the young people. Uh, the youth uh, have a lot of potential and they need to be uh, given opportunity um, in leadership positions. I think we are missing a lot by not including them in leadership positions. I think we should uh, acknowledge that government is um, is trying to do what they can in assisting these communities. And I think we should give them credit for um, supporting the communities in different ways they have tried to. However, in my opinion, government is not going to do things for communities. Communities need to learn to strengthen themselves and be assertive Communities need to initiate. Communities should not be passive and wait for government to move them. Communities should be proactive and actually drive government towards what needs to be done in their communities. So I think we should move away from um, the old idea of communities you know, sitting passively and government is going to do things for them. No, communities should be empowered to learn to work together and communities should find out what are their problems and how to solve them and make propositions to government. This is the way we want things to be done. The Australian context has very little knowledge of the different communities and especially African communities that have come in. And we should also acknowledge that from the word go, uh, the Australian context did not have included in their policies and procedures and operations, the needs uh, of the African population that has come in. Now, it would not be, in my view, it would not be clever for the African communities to expect a government to know what we need. The people should be more proactive 
and if need be, go to government to include in their policies some of the requirements that we have which do not appear in policies. Uh, government should make provisions, yes, policy-wise, uh, financially, and providing space, even space for discussion, debate, consultation, and so forth. Those are the things that um, I believe the communities, the African, uh, African Australian communities, should be pressing on government to provide. But as for what the African communities need, I'm sure they should, themselves should be able to assess their needs and work together. And this is what community development is. Be proactive yourselves, find out your problems, and suggest solutions. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, we're going to have a lot more coming from Dr. Charles, as well as other experts within the uh, broader African Australian community in relation to community development. If you have any question, please write to us, info at africamediaaustralia.com. Please continue to make comments. Give us your feedback because it is important to guide us in what we, we are doing. You can make comments under the uh, video, whether it's on YouTube, because we place our videos on YouTube, or on our website as well. Under the, the uh, video, there's a comment box. You can make comments there, and you can also email us or text us. Our details are on the website and on the screen. Until next time, God bless you.